been very fortunate to be with Rutgers for about seven years uh, doing a wide range of training for them and uh, I've been in the field of training and development and uh, for about 25 uh, plus years and uh, I really love the opportunity that I can actually work with a variety of organizations and uh, pr provide different types of education and training uh, for folks at your, at your organization. So I really, really feel very blessed to have this opportunity. So this particular course, Partner With Your Boss, Be the Indispensable Assistant, uh, is a really good course for a variety of reasons, but it really gives people an opportunity to think and reflect about how they do the things they do and how they can uh, maximize their relationship with, uh, with the pe person they report to and even maximize their relationship with others that they work with as well. But to get us started, what I'd like for us to do is the following. I'd like for you to think of this. To th uh, first of all, let's see, I'm have you, uh, yeah, have your partner up. I'm gonna have your partner up, and let's see, how many do we have in here? So, uh, there might be a trio, so if you wouldn't mind maybe, uh, uh, do we have a trio? Yeah, we have two here, two there, and wait a second, we need a trio here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just partner up, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, and what I'm gonna ask you to do is as follows. Alrighty. I'd like for you to do the following. In your in, in the short amount of time you're gonna have together, I'm gonna ask you to ask one another the following question. And this question is this. Okay, I'll get this straight. What's the most critical element for an effective partnership? So you'll ask your partner that, and they'll give you a response, and then you're gonna ask them, why is that important to you? And they'll tell you whatever the answer is, and then you'll ask them again, well, why is that important to you? They'll respond, and then one more time, why is that important to you? And see what you get in that brief conversation. Then you'll flip roles. Again, starting with that same question, what is the most critical element for an effective partnership? Okay, make sense? Okay, so uh, we'll do the trio here, all right, since we have an odd number in the, in the group there, okay? Okay, let's, I'm gonna have you wrap up. It was a brief time to do just that, but in that short amount of time when you had to uh, ask each other about you know, that item that really stands out and you had to ask, you know, why is it important to you, what were some themes that sort of bubbled up to the surface? Trust, okay, all right. They cried out with glee. <laughs> yeah. What else? Communication. Communication, reliability, all righty. And uh, why, are those, why are those elements so important? Why do, you, why do you see those as some of the critical elements of making a good partnership with whoever you work with, whether it's working with your leader or, or your colleagues? Why is it so important? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. By all means. Yeah, so it's a, that's that ebb and flow that needs to go on between both parties, yeah, for sure. So in our program, in this program, this is overall what we're, you know, what we will be focusing on, uh, is that we are looking at what are, again, the parameters of an effective relationship with one's boss, and what do you, uh, you know, what's, what is indeed the role of both uh, trust and emotional intelligence in working with uh, your leader, working with your colleagues, and you actually will develop, the people who come to this class actually will develop an action plan. What are the things they're gonna do to apply the skills and the, uh, and the information that we discuss in class? What I really love to do in, in uh, all my classes, this included, is really get people to start thinking. To start thinking and reflecting on how they do the things they do and what makes them open, what makes them decide to uh, provide feedback to a colleague, what makes them decide maybe to hold back, um, how, do they, how do they nurture those relationships with the people that they work with uh, is something that we don't always take the time to do. So this, partic this course and a lot of this courses that focus on sort of soft skills really we, uh, we gives the, uh, the person the opportunity to really think about what they do, how they do it, and you know, what the impact is. So we focus on these as our learning outcomes. You did a quick uh, summary of that right now, just what are some of the things that are important to you. And within the program, what we do is we do a number of different activities, but 
again, we're helping the person, uh, the people in the class, have them take a look at ourselves because we know that we can't change anybody, you know, we change ourselves, but by changing our own behavior, sometimes we build, bring out changes at others, others' behavior as well. So uh, there are a number of tools that I like to use. One of them is a self-assessment where they actually do a little assessment of some of their self-management tools. How, how do they manage their productivity, their time, how do they hold themselves accountable, what are some of the other you know, typical skills that are important to somebody's administrative uh, type role. So there's a, an assessment for that. Um, we do focus in on, on trust. It is one of the key elements in, uh, in any relationship, of course. And what we do is we look at uh, not just trust from, uh, in a generic way, but we look at trust from a couple different angles. You have trust in terms of professional trust, and then you also have personal trust. And by that, the distinction I mean a professional trust is like, I really trust the person has the skills and the competencies to do what his or her job is. Like, I trust that surgeon, he's done 50, she's done 15,000 appendectomies. I trust their skills, their competencies, and no sweat about it. But do I trust them personally? Do I trust their integrity? Do I trust the values that they seem to uh, demonstrate? Um, how much uh, trust do I put in the relationship? And so the idea is here, let's not just look at what we do, but how we do the things we do. And so we focus on that. We also take a look at trying to uh, talk about trust in some more concrete ways, which is looking at some of the behaviors of trust. Like how do you know that somebody is trustworthy and what are some of the actions? So one uh, tool that I'd like to draw from, it comes from the speed of trust and they talk about uh, 13 behaviors that tie in with trust. So just, uh, uh, there's a little more detail when we get into actually activities, but if I had to had ask you, what does it mean about talking straight? How does that relate to trust? What might you say to that? What's, what's one, one thought you have? How does talking straight tie in with trust? What does it mean and how does it tie in? Yes. Right, right. Just knowing how to sort of manage that, those, those, those boundaries of sorts between you and the other person. Yeah. Is that accurate with your? Yeah, okay. So what we also do is you take a look at, well, how do you decide what to be open to? You know? And so one, one tool, there's a lot of different tools out there. One that I found very useful is this uh, item called the Jahari window. Is anybody familiar with that? I've heard of it. Okay. And what it does, it actually helps people take a look at how open are they with individuals? And how, are they, how much do they you know, share things with others? How much do they keep themselves? And how open are they to provide feedback to their, to their boss? And how receptive are they to feedback? And so this assessment, really what it does, it helps them take a look at you know, where do they stand in this overall uh, realm of you know, being open and being uh, uh, open to feedback and sharing of themselves, again, to build that connection with their boss. So as this, uh, the window here uh, explains is that uh, in terms of open, that's just for an example. These are things we know about ourselves that you know, we, we are aware of, but and others are aware of it as well. They can see it, they know by what we do, what we demonstrate. It's a very obvious sort of element about that person. Uh, the part that may be blind, we're not aware of it, but people see it in us. And until somebody brings that to our awareness, you know, we're, not, we're not aware of that. Uh, uh, that there's maybe a certain behavior or something that's going on that may be negatively impacting the relationship. And then, of course, down here, uh, there are items that are hidden. They're, they're, we know these certain things about ourselves, but others aren't aware of it. And then there's information that we don't even know about ourselves that has yet to come to the surface. So I'm not getting, it's not, this is all, it's not all psychology per se, it's just getting the people to start thinking about how, how much do I trust myself? How much do I trust the other person? How, wi how willing am I to make some sort of a risk and being straightforward in my talking with, uh, with my colleagues and with my boss? So it gets them to think about it. Uh, I also do a little work on or, uh, information about emotional intelligence and how uh, QA, as they call it, your, uh, your EQ, I'm sorry, your emotional quotient and how it's so critical to one's success. You know, there's talk about how IQ is important, but your success at work really is on how well you uh, demonstrate emotional intelligence. So we, again, they look at how, how they manage their own 
uh, their own behaviors, manage their own emotions, uh, how tuned in are they to the emotions of other people, and therefore able to work and understand and see things from another perspective as well. So there's some focus on empathy there, building those connections. And these are just some sample questions that are sort of woven in throughout all the activities and all done all at one shot. But uh, how open are you in your relationship with your boss? Uh, how does this affect your ability to work with, the, with your leader? How willing are you to receive feedback or give feedback? What actions can you take to further build trust? And how does emotional intelligence play a role in working uh, not only with your leader, but with other individuals as well? So it's, uh, again, a time for people to really sit back, think and reflect on, on themselves and the relationships they have and how can they uh, you know, manage some of the behaviors that will m move them to a more trusting, uh, more effective uh, collaboration with the person that they, that they report to. All right. So it's a little summary on it. And um, what do we do is we also, I asked them to make a commitment to different actions that they would take to, uh, to put into, into process some of the, the information that we talk about. And this is a, an action plan that comes from out of Stephen Covey. He uses this technique. You can use it in a variety of ways, but what are some behaviors you're going to start doing? What are some behaviors you're going to stop doing? And what behaviors are you going to continue doing that enhances those relationships with, uh, with your boss? Right. Uh, there is a one tool, though, that if you, in terms of really helping to manage your boss, you might want to also invest in one of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's called just that, control a boss, like pay raise, calm down, <laughs> make a decision. <laughs> so I tell you, if I did make one of those, I'd be a pretty rich guy right now. <laughs> yeah. So that's a real quick snapshot. But uh, what questions might you have about some of the content or the approach that I use? Um, yes? You mean in terms of managing up uh, other other people in the in the department? Like to your boss, uh -huh. you know the whole managing up concept. Mm -hmm. is, is there a piece in the training on that? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so critical that uh, that people do indeed, you know, express you know what their uh, understanding is of, of what other people do and manage those, you know. Ma uh, I know in terms of for customer service, I, know I see it more in that context, managing up when you, when you want to refer somebody to somebody else in the organization. You say, hey, you know, you're going to be in good hands with such and such a person. They're, I, really, I really trust that they're going to do a good job with you. And, you know, you, and so I, I, I talk about it in that, in that way in terms of building those relationships uh, with, uh, with one another. Is that uh, what you were thinking? Or? Yeah, 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 I think that's part of um, kind of what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to do this job better. Mm -hmm. So I would, that's why I was inquiring if there was a, you know, a piece on that. So it would be an open and asking directly for what you need? Is Correct. That, yeah, oh, by all means. Yeah. By all means, yeah. I mean, that's, otherwise people are going to be guessing what it is you need, you know. And so that's, again, the idea of uh, being open, uh, asking for what you need, uh, realizing that, that by doing that, being assertive, it, you add value to the organization that way versus you know, you know, holding back. So uh, that, is, uh, that does indeed get included. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes? So, um, uh, I've got a couple of questions. Sure. So, like, um, I guess the, the class makeup, would, um, would supervisors be in the same course and working with uh, the subordinates together? Or Generally, no. Generally, I've had this just for frontline employees, people who are in administrative type roles or aspiring to be administrative roles, but I generally haven't mixed the two, the two together. Yeah. Have you have not? No, I haven't. No, I haven't, and, no. Uh, and this, uh, this course that you deliver to all branches of, of the organization, or? Yeah, well, so I've done it for <laughs> multiple departments and uh, different organizations. It's uh, um, 
yeah, I mean, it's, it's been primarily all front line, but it's from, from different walks of, of, of the organization, from the human resource folks to people in some of the, I do, I've done a lot of this in healthcare organizations, and so it's uh, people in the clinical roles, people in, or not, well, some in the clinical roles, they take this course too, but a lot of the support staff, people from the distribution area, people from the purchasing department, I mean, a lot of the behind the scenes people uh, have been, have, have gone to this course. Uh, well, I would modify this course if I were, you know, doing it specifically for leaders. I would change it. I mean, some of the information that definitely you know, is, would be used as well, but I would have to be changed a bit for, for leadership. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.